dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Amelia Lee. Kentucky State Police is investigating the death of an infant in Owsley County. Officials say they received a call around 1030 Friday morning about a woman who was taken to a hospital due to a miscarriage. Troopers say that when they got to the hospital, the couple informed them that the infant was still at a home on Lewis Lane in Boonville. The infant was found over an embankment and that baby was pronounced dead. Here's an update from a story that we brought you last night. I-75 in Laurel County is reopened after a serious crash. The London Laurel County Rescue Squad says it happened last night near the 47 mile marker. They say multiple cars crashed. A semi trailer broke through the barrier. Two people were hurt and at least one person was flown to the hospital. And here's another update for a story we brought you yesterday about a cat napping. The Corbin Police Department say that that cat was safely returned to its home. A recall has been issued for sun fed whole cucumbers due to possible salmonella contamination. The cucumbers were distributed to 26 states, including Tennessee and Virginia. The Food and Drug Administration says they recalled the recalled products were sold between October 12th and November 26th. An FDA posting says there were illnesses reported, but did not specify how many. Consumers with the produce are urged to throw it away or return it. If you drive a Hyundai Santa Fe or Elantra, this could be concerning for you. More than 226,000 of the vehicles are being recalled due to an issue with the rear view camera. The recall affects certain 2021 and 2022 models. The automaker says the camera can fail, posing a risk to bystanders while the car is in reverse. Owners will be notified by mail beginning in mid January. Several Democratic lawmakers from Connecticut say they received bomb threats on Thanksgiving. Representatives Joe Courtney, Johanna Hayes, Jim Hines and John Larson issued individual statements to say they were targeted. Law enforcement looked into each threat and said there was no evidence of a bomb. These incidences came roughly 24 hours after similar threats were made against some of President elect Donald Trump's cabinet and administration picks. Law enforcement officials have previously said these threats often come from people overseas just looking to draw attention. Investigators are looking into how a woman managed to sneak through multiple security checkpoints at JFK Airport. The woman managed to board a flight from New York City to Paris. TSA says the woman bypassed the identity verification station at the TSA checkpoint, but she did go through a body scanner and her carry on items were x rayed. She then managed to sneak past the document check at the gate and get on the plane. French police did arrest the woman when the plane landed. We have some pretty cold temperatures as you're heading out the door. Take a look outside Hazard, Pikeville in London, not seeing much in terms of fog, but those temperatures are quite cold. We're looking in the low 30s and upper 20s, 29 right now in London, 30 degrees in Pikeville and in Hazard. But we do have a relatively calm wind, making those feels like just a little bit colder than they actually are in Hazard. We're looking about 23 degrees and you can really see that pictured out on that future view with the temp and the wind chill. So right now we're seeing significantly colder temperatures feels like than it actually is. And as we move through the next couple hours, here is that overnight low temperature. We're expecting the low twenties, but take a look 24 in hazard, but that feels like 16 degrees. And as you're traveling towards wise, that's when you're going to see the coldest temperatures in the area. 19 degrees is that temperature, but the feels like with that wind chill would get down to the low teens, 11 degrees. Same thing as you're heading towards Logan, 12 degree feels like temperature. So that will be the story for the rest of your night as you're going into your Saturday, but we will warm up ever so slightly. And as you're going into your Saturday, those temperatures will be in the 30s, 34 for hazard, but it feels like 28 as you're traveling towards Monticello and Somerset. That's where you're going to see those warmer temperatures. Somerset has a high temperature of 36, but that feels like is still in the 20s, upper 20s at that 29 degrees. And we'll continue to see those temperatures dropping as we're going through the next couple of days. And as you look at that overnight lows, 
it's no surprise why we're under that first alert weather day for Sunday and Monday as those temperatures are quite cold. 19 degrees overnight lows for Sunday and 18 for Monday. And with those feels like temperatures with the wind chill, you could expect the low teens and upper single digit feels like definitely going to be cold. You want to be prepared as you are traveling home from the holidays this weekend. So here are the details on that first alert again. Sunday and Monday are the timing due to those dangerous wind chills that are dropping those temperatures in the feels like of the low teens and upper single digits. But let's take a look at that drought monitor that was updated yesterday. And as you can see, we're doing a lot better as this has the influence of that snow we saw last week. And we do have the dryness as you're traveling more towards the southwest, but and also as you're traveling towards the northeast. And as we're going through the next couple of days, we'll see a little bit more precipitation that could help that out. But let's look at that live pinpoint Doppler radar. We're staying mostly clear. We do see some snow as you're traveling out of our area, but as we're looking to the future at that future view, will be nice, nice and dry for most of your Saturday. But as you're heading into the evening hours, that's when you see that chance for snow. This is Saturday around that 8 p.m. hour and it'll be pushing through our area. Here is a way to better visualize where that snow will be more focused on the northeast and that'll continue to push itself through and we'll be seeing that snow even as we're going through your Sunday clearing up by the time that Monday at midnight rolls around. But let's take a look at the amount of snowfall you could be expecting most places less than an inch. But as you're traveling more towards the edge of Kentucky and as you're seeing in Virginia and West Virginia, we could see up to two inches and as you're traveling towards Tennessee trace amounts really not seeing much in terms of sticking though on the roads really just on those grassy areas but 22 will be that overnight temperature we'll see those temperatures continue to drop through the next couple hours in our air eight seven day forecast where your weekend is always in view as the temperatures dropping throughout the week and the snow chances this weekend amelia all right, Megan, thank you. Can't wait for some of that snow. Well, Black Friday shoppers hit the stores today, finding presents or just being present as folks powered through the aisles. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has a look at what the lines looked like in Pike County. Some people start the morning after Thanksgiving with black coffee. Others like a taste of Black Friday. You get it, your deals, and you get out, and most everybody else is still in bed, a turkey coma. Shoppers in Pike County hit the streets as early as 4 a.m waiting to find the perfect presence for their people, like Madison Newsom, who has been lining up for deals for decades. So we got up real early. I was really proud of myself, actually. And I was like, dude, we gotta be first in line. Or shoppers like Diana and Laura Hall, who are remembering what they loved about the holiday hustle. We are starting back our tradition of Black Friday shopping. We stopped, this is our first chance trip since post COVID. Some shoppers say they hit the winter sales on a whim hoping to create new memories. We actually decided to come Black Friday shopping last minute because we normally do it online. But we was like, you know, it'll be a fun little time together as a couple. The shift to online shopping has changed the way Black Friday looks for many families, but some say it seems to be returning to its former popularity. Well, there's been a steady stream of vehicles coming in, so it was more crowded than I thought it would be. And there are those who miss the frantic feel of a Friday deal. I mean, I like the I like the fun. I, I liked whenever it was crazy, you know? I mean, this is pretty civilized. Saying whether you're looking for a special gift or even a snow globe, of course, because I want a snow globe. Find a snow globe, something like that. Yeah. Black Friday is the best bet. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Shoppers say the cold weather didn't deter those looking for deals, and it feels good to be in the holiday spirit. According to the National Retail Federation, a record 183 million people are expected to join the holiday shopping season this weekend. Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday is the peak of that shopping. If predictions are correct, shoppers this year will spend just a few percentage points more on holiday shopping than last year. Shoppers say retailers appear to be taking notice by offering better deals than last year. So $500. And I have a good like a hundred left over, and as you can see, we got we got a lot. Got a whole so bunch. you've been busy today. Oh yes. yes, oh yes. Retail analysts find that in-person shopping still beats shopping online when it comes to those impulse buys. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving Day sales. 
And don't forget about Small Business Saturday. It started in 2010 with the goal of bringing attention to small and locally owned businesses. In 2023, the reported projected spending on Small Business Saturday was around $17 billion. Since 2010, shoppers spent $201 billion supporting small businesses. After yesterday's Thanksgiving feasts, many of you may have an abundance of leftover food, but it's important to remember food safety when eating them. Be for sure that you're storing that food in small and shallow containers to help them cool quickly. You need to eat the food within four days unless you're freezing it for later. After Monday and they're not frozen, it's best to just toss it out. And when you're reheating your meal, be sure to monitor the cold spots and heat your food thoroughly to avoid getting sick. AAA says more than 70 million drivers hit the roads this Thanksgiving. The group says the best travel times on Saturday or Saturday, Sunday morning. Experts say there will be more traffic on Friday morning, Saturday evening and Sunday afternoon. A Southern Kentucky family wants this Christmas season to be extra special for a beloved member who has had a rough couple of years because of cancer. Richard Abbott of Somerset has leukemia. Doctors have told him he likely has less than a year to live. His family would like to see him receive as many Christmas cards as possible this season. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to Abbott and his family about their wish. It was this time of the year two years ago that the Abbott family received some devastating news about Richard. They told him that he, if he made it a year, it would be a miracle. So I prayed to God for a miracle and I've got him for two years now. Richard Abbott but has plasma go. cell leukemia. We're to the point that there is no more they can do. Crystal so says their 11 grandchildren good. came up with an idea in an attempt to break a world record. Let's make, have people to make Christmas cards and send them. Or let's sign Papa up so his name would go in the big book. This Christmas, I feel like it's gonna mean like a, a lot because of everything that's been going on this year. Abbott was a local business owner and for almost three decades, his family says he was extremely generous, trusting people to simply come back and pay later. Many of them did. And now his family is asking for this small favor for this holiday season. Abbott says there's a simple reason why he was so generous. If you say a man's struggling, you're supposed to help him out of the ditch. Richard may be in quite the low place now, but he's looking up, literally. I even told the doctors, I said it's in God's hands. He can do whatever he wants. And this family is hoping people will simply send a card this Christmas season. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Crystal Abbott says she researched how many cards Richard would have to receive to break the world record. She says it's about 350 million. If you would like to send a card, we have more information on our website, WYMT.com.